Okay, here's my first question. Um, I, I'm worried this one may be a complete uh, failure of a question for this special season of 10 questions to 10 missionaries, but I'm going to keep trying it until I just absolutely am positively sure it's not going to work. <laughs> okay. In and out or five guys? Five guys all the way. Yeah, I'm sorry. We, we've heard in and out a lot from our fellow missionaries, but five guys. Have you ever tried in and out or is it just? We have, but we had a layover in California and there was a Chick-fil-A and a five guys. And we no, had Chick-fil-A and uh, in and out. In and in and out. And we had to walk past the Chick-fil-A to get to the in and out. It must have taken us like four or five tries to get all the way past the Chick-fil-A to the in and out. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, okay, I'll accept that. <laughs> Welcome to the bonus season of 10 Questions with 10 Pastors. This is 10 Questions with 10 Missionaries. Brought to you by Gateway Seminary. With your host, Tyler Sanders. I'm here with Philip and Ashley Irwin, who are a student strategist with uh, uh, Asia Pacific Rim for IMB. Uh, I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about the work you guys do. Yeah, sure. So we've been with the IMB for the last 11 years, and pretty much all of that we've been in working with student ministries in some capacity. And so we joined the student strategy team back in 2019, and it's really about helping young adults, so 18 to 29 year olds, find out how the Lord may be calling them into missions. And so we have programs ranging from about two weeks up to a year. And we help work with BCMs, colleges, uh, churches and ministries to help get those young adults overseas. Could you give me uh, the highlights of your story from salvation, call to missions, uh, to where you guys are now? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I was, I became a follower at a really young age and I also felt called to missions at a young age. Um, but really that became a reality in college um, when um, I felt the Lord just stirring in my heart to, to go. And so in college, I signed up for a six month and semester abroad studying um, in East Asia. And that's actually where I met Philip. Yeah, we met in the airport. Um <laughs> on our way to a six month trip. Um, ironically, that six month program is called Hands On and it, we help facilitate that program now. So it's pretty funny to come full circle um, leading the program that we met through. But I was similar, I around 13, I felt first called to uh, work in East Asia specifically and uh, went on my first trip in college and absolutely loved it and felt like that's where the Lord had me. And so I immediately signed up for the hands-on program for the semester. And yeah, I met Ashley in the airport and the rest is history. What was your first big uh, like culture shock moment on the field? Ooh. Hmm. So, I mean... Personally, I think the very first time, so I was I was living in a place where uh, with sub-zero temperatures and there was snow everywhere on the ground and I couldn't figure out how to turn the heat on in my room and no one in the building spoke any English. And so we tried like doing charades a couple times of getting the people to understand that we wanted the heat on and they didn't get it. And so my roommate and I, who was also in the program, he and I both put on every piece of clothing that we had and just huddled together for warmth till morning till we get our supervisors to come turn the heat on. But yeah, it was pretty funny. I'm going to say it's a toss up between the snot rockets and the split pants. <laughs> wow. Is that two separate things? Yeah. So snot okay. rockets being, you know, you close one hole in your nose and yeah. just let the snot fly. It's and really then, common. Yeah. <laughs> And then the other would be babies didn't wear diapers. They had just a hole in their pants so they could just squat and they're with the split in their pants, just go to the bathroom when they need to go. But, you know, parents there, they train their kids to go on a whistle. And so if they're really polite, they'd hold them over a trash can before they whistled. But Yeah. So we have, we have two girls and, and, you know, they grew up 
in East Asia and their first time coming back to the States, our youngest was three. Um, and she was not, she was really scared of the automatic toilets in America. Every time they flushed automatically, it would make her afraid. And she really just didn't understand why she couldn't just go to the bathroom outside whenever she wanted. <laughs> that was a big adjustment for us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a change. Uh, how do you guys prepare day to day for your mission work? Yeah. So I think, Flexibility is key overseas. Um, no plan usually ever goes exactly like you thought it would. And so you kind of have to hold everything pretty loosely where you have a rough idea of what you want to do, but you know, between your friends and the spirit, <laughs> um, you kind of course correct a little bit. But doing university ministry like we do, we, we keep pretty strange hours. And so even our kids from really young ages, we nap in the day sometimes and stay out really late with students. And mm -hmm. yeah, we, uh, weekends are always very busy, um, when the students have free time. So spend a lot of time all day out of the weekend. Well, this may be uh, a related question then. Uh, my next question is, uh, uh, what's a consistent challenge in your missionary work? Hmm. I think it shifts maybe like as time goes on. So language barrier was huge when we first got there. We had lots of moments where we had to learn to laugh at ourselves because we had language faux pas and mistakes. Um, but then I think after that, you know, the first eight years of our 11, we're in a closed country. And so finding that balance between being bold, but also keeping access and not having to leave where we are was probably the hardest. Mm -hmm. Anything for you? Yeah, I would say, I would say maybe like, because you're more aware of like the big ministry challenges. I think sometimes like the things that ended up being hardest were just the day-to-day -day living things that just wear on you over time. Um, just really simple things like using public transportation all the time or living in a five-story walk-up and having to carry all your groceries up. Um, I feel like, yeah, maybe those were, were more of, um, kind of snuck up on you. What part of your, uh, spiritual giftings matches up well with the work you guys do? Ooh, that's a good one. Well, Philip is really gifted in hospitality. Um, and so he's, he's really good at just welcoming people into our home and making them feel really comfortable. And, um, yeah. I feel like I've seen that gift being used all the time. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's funny how, you know, God provides and, uh, you know, gives you someone in your life that, you know, balances your strengths and weaknesses. So for me, like I'm, I'm definitely more of the big dreamer and like Ashley has the plans. Um, she, uh, studied accounting in college. She very much knows where to, uh, how to make it all work. And so I'll come to her with these big ideas and then she can help me logistically think through like, okay, well, this is how this can actually happen. And she's just really gifted in that way of, of taking these big dreams and making them happen from day to day and bringing them to fruition a little bit more. Can you tell me a uh, swing and a miss you guys have had on the mission field? Ooh. Yeah, for sure. Um. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I, I think I said earlier, you gotta, I think one of the things we learned quickest on the field is learning to laugh at yourself because they're definitely going to laugh at you. And so you might as well join in. Um. Yeah, I think a, a really simple example, we had um, a weekly seeker study um, for people who are interested in learning more about the Bible and we had plans and it was raining and our friend was like, I think we should cancel tonight because it's going to rain. And we were like, well, we're going to be inside. So it shouldn't matter. Like, I think it will be okay to still go forward. And we planned the study and I cooked a bunch of food and then no one showed up. Like absolutely no one because it was raining. Um, and culturally you don't go out in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> I, all sorts of funny things. I, I was just thinking of, um, I had a training that I did with some local house church leaders and at Christmas time we were finishing up the training and we thought it'd be really fun and great to uh, invite them all over for a Christmas dinner. 
Um, and so Ashley was like, well, you know, we should make them something they've never had before. And so she decided to make fajitas. And she was like, oh, this will be fun. We'll make fajitas. And then it's Christmas time. Let's do like a DIY cookie station. And so she made this big bowl of green icing and this big bowl of red icing and all these cookies that they could decorate. And I ended up I got caught up with something, got called out of the room and... And me being the non-planner, I didn't tell anybody how to uh, eat the food. And so these local house church leaders came through and they're serving themselves these fajitas and the cookie stations immediately after that. Well, the green and red icing look like green and red pepper paste. And so they start heaping icing all over their fajitas. <laughs> and then they're like, and they all eating and they're being so sweet. They're like, oh, this is really good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the trash. Let's start over here. <laughs> we can promise you from experience that uh, cookie fajitas are not not, not a way to go. No, that's a really good one. Uh, what are you guys reading right now? Do you have any books you're you're into? Yeah, um, I just finished a good one recently. Um, it's by Daryl E. Hall. It's called Speaking Across Generations. And it's talking about how it goes through everything from uh, the silent generation boomers up through Gen Z. And it talks about how to contextualize your sermons um, it's written more for pastors, but how to contextualize your sermons and your just your gospel presentation so that each generation can hear you and how to how to go about making like intergenerational preaching in worship. That was really good. Yeah, that's cool. Well, my answer sounds really silly after that. I, I probably should have come up with something more academic, but I'm reading Hunger Games <laughs> and getting ready for the movie coming out. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, this is my last serious question. Um, okay. I guess the one after that, the bonus question is kind of serious, but this is this is a good one. Uh, if you could go back, what advice would you give yourself as a first year missionary? Ooh, I think it's one of those things that you're like told over and over before you go out on the field um, to like not have any expectations to not um, come at it with anything in particular. And I think subconsciously you do anyway. And since we both served for a short time as singles before we came over as a married couple, I think there were a lot of things I would have just said to like come over more with a clean slate, like give yourself that grace to discover it new again. Hmm. I think, I think for me just, I, just to trust God more fully. Um, I feel like Phil mentioned earlier how quickly plans have changed, but I feel like, um, I feel like, yeah, we've never made it to the end of the year where it looked exactly like we, um, that expectations we had going into that year. And so just trusting that God's plans for us are, are so much bigger and better than, than what we've planned. Um, but it takes time to get to that place. You know, you go through some lows before you can have that um, hindsight. Yeah, that's really good, I think. Uh, here's my bonus question. Uh, if there's anyone listening and they're just sitting there thinking, these are my people, how can I get involved? How can I get my church involved supporting this kind of work? What's the best way for a church to do that? Yeah, absolutely. There are so many ways to get involved. Um, and we recognize that like, for some people, that's going to mean um, praying and giving and being in touch with missionaries, sending encouragement, all of those kind of ways make such an impact. They seem small and insignificant, but I assure you they're not. And then for others, like we get the privilege of helping young people actually go to the mission field. And it's so cool because we've just seen... Um, when, when someone's removed from all of their norms and all of um, all of the normal expectations of how they've built their life, like we've seen God do amazing things and show them giftings they never knew they had and ways God could use them in ways they just never expected. And it's, it's really neat to see God do that. Yeah, I mean, like kind of like Ashley was saying, we've had people that have come over and for some of them, maybe they don't feel called to full-time missions after they, they come on the trip. But I feel like 
it's pretty rare for someone to come on a trip and not be changed in some way, whether it's just being open to the need for the gospel worldwide and just a better understanding of the Great Commission or culturally or a lot of people even that we've worked with, you know, they come back and they realize, you know, the nations are in their own backyards. And so it just opens their hearts and minds up for those people groups back where they are. And so, yeah, I think if you ever get an opportunity to go, I think more than anything, just even if it's just for two weeks, that opportunity to see God at work and his heart for the nations can be really life changing. Perfect. That sounds great. Thank you guys so much for your time. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Our kids think we're so cool now being on a podcast. (laughs) Podcasters. Thank you. We appreciate it. Um, And if anybody wants to look at any of the programs that we offer, they can go to imb.org slash students. Um, And there's lots of breakdowns and it has opportunities for anything from two weeks to a year. Perfect. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much. 